Why is the history of food in Newfoundland unique? Today on All About Canadian Books, author Amanda Dorothy Jean Fullman will tell us. But before we speak with Amanda or Andy as she's known, if you love books and the stories behind them, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted Tuesdays and Thursdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. I am so excited to have Amanda Dorothy Jean Bullman, Andy, and she's going to chat about her cookbook, Salt Beef Buckets, A Love Story. And Andy, can you hold up a copy of your book for us? Yeah. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Hey. <laughs> it was published by Breakwater Books. And welcome to All About Canadian Books, Andy. Hi, it's great to be here. So um, why is the history of food in Newfoundland so unique? Well, Newfoundland is an island, so I think how, I think the culinary history of islands always sort of think kind of exist in a vacuum. So, and I think that's really a fascinating thing to study. So, you know, the culinary history of any place has its own unique story, but the way that geography shapes the food of Newfoundland and Labrador, I think is really fascinating. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of outside influence for a long time. And now there's all kinds of outside influence, which I think is really exciting. We're seeing all kinds of new sort of twists on cuisine. I love that. And so I made sure when I wrote this book, there's other voices in it as well, talking about their experience in Newfoundland and Labrador and foods that they've brought here and have altered a little bit based on what's available. And I think that that um, is really interesting. And um, yeah. Okay, um, I was really interested when I was going through your book, um, because I kept thinking, gosh, this must have been so much fun for you to research. Um, can you tell us how you went about collecting the original recipes? Yeah, absolutely. I spent a lot of time in the library and the archives. Um, I got to know some of the librarians very well. <laughs> um, I make sure to thank them in the book because like, I don't think I could have done it without them. Um, I wrote part of this during the first wave of the pandemic. It was really challenging. You know, libraries were closed, firsthand resources were closed. Um, and I've been collecting cookbooks and, and firsthand sort of things for a long time. I had a lot of handwritten recipes. I had sort of done some research collecting these things. But when the pandemic hit, you know, I was really stuck with just what I had. And I was able to access online resources, but it's not the same as going into an archives and digging in. Um, so when everything opened back up, I was so happy. Um, and so the process for me was I sort of read widely. I read all kinds of books that like um, a fire fighting group in a, a tiny city or a tiny town in the bays of Newfoundland would have produced. I found school, elementary school cookbooks that they produced. I found old diaries. I just read very widely. And then I made a list of recipes that I was like, okay, I feel like these recipes are quintessential Newfoundland recipes and so I want to find old versions that I know work really well and then create new modernized versions and then I had worked as a chef for a number of years and had given foraging tours um, so I had that knowledge uh, myself and I had other friends I could talk to and uh, seek out ideas from and so I also wanted to throw in the foraging component. And then I wanted to talk about what I didn't know, which was stories from other cultures of people who moved here and stories of other people's experiences. So I, there's a little bit of all of that in the book. And it took a long time, it took a really long time to write. <laughs> I, oh, I believe it. And I act, I loved the stories. Like that's such a great part of your of your cookbook. And while you were researching, any surprises? Um, absolutely. Yeah, a couple big surprises. Um, I think one thing that really surprised me was um, dandelions were used so often. Um, dandelion roots were used for coffee. Dandelion mm -hmm. leaves were used for salads. The dandelion heads were pickled. Dandelion wine was made. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised to see so much dandelion stuff kind of pop up all the time. Another thing that really surprised me was that um, chanterelles, we have tons of wild edible mushrooms here in Newfoundland and it didn't become 
we didn't, people didn't know that um, for a long time. Um, we didn't know that until about the 90s when there was sort of a big migration of people here from other countries who were like, hey, these edible, these mushrooms are edible. And that's a really amazing thing. Like if we hadn't had that immigration, um, that wave of newcomers, we would never have known that. So it's, it really goes to show like how important um, having new people new people new ideas is because we would have missed out on like such a beautiful aspect now now mushroom season in newfoundland is like a big thing so that was another thing um and i touch a little bit on craft history in newfoundland and labrador on rug hooking um and i think what really surprised me is i hadn't known how craft history like craft history and culinary history so little bit is studied or written about because like so much of it was women's experiences or the experience of people in lower socioeconomic groups. Um, so I find that really interesting, like how difficult it was to find like people talking about making rugs. You know, I, I found that really interesting um, because it was a huge part of culture in the bays here and people didn't really, you know, so I, I like that quite a bit. I, I liked studying about craft history. It made me want to write a book about craft history actually. <laughs> Yeah. Will that be next? I don't know. Maybe. I think what's next is actually a kid's book. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna. I'm hoping to write a kid's book about science and recipes and, um, you know, beekeeping and that kind of thing. Oh, that'll be interesting. That'll be really interesting. Um, and when I was going through your cookbook, I I really love how you've included the old recipes and with your your updated version with with a twist and I kept thinking the whole time like what is your process so you look at that traditional recipe like how do you how do you put that spin on it how do you do that <laughs> yeah no that's super fair sometimes I was really really stumped like tur is a bird here it's a wild bird it is um I'm gonna describe the flavor as unique but that's kind of code for like maybe bad <laughs> for me. I don't have, uh, I don't love the way it tastes. It is, Newfoundlanders are one of the last people that are allowed to hunt seabirds. And, um, and that was sort of when we joined Confederation, that was part of the process. We were like, we'll only be allowed to join. We only want to join if we can continue to hunt seabirds. So that was written into like Newfoundland joining Confederation. And so the tur hunt happens every winter. People go out on boats in the frozen, freezing water in the midst of gales and they shoot turs, which are a migrating seabird. Um, and they look a bit like gannets and they are so oily <laughs> and they're so tough and they're so gamey. They taste like the most oily fish I can't yeah and You're so not selling me on an Andy <laughs> no. well I had tur the way people typically give me I've had tur many times and it does feel like tough and oily to me and so working with that I was like okay well a tur is sort of like a saltwater duck and with a saltwater duck I might do like star anise and orange so let me try a brine and see how that works with the tur and so I kind of thought about what is this thing like? Um, you know, that's kind of how I worked with it. Um, other things, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of some of the recipes that I did. You know, I found so many recipes for like jellied kind of aspic um, salads made of beet. And I re tried to recreate a few of them and I was like, this is gross. <laughs> so I thought about what flavors they were trying to celebrate. And I was like, okay, it's beet. It's sort of floral. There's some floral flavors happening in this sort of jelly mold thing. And so I did a beet salad that had like rose petals and Parmesan. And so I, that's kind of how, how I got there. Um, a lot of times I thought about what would a different, like with hardtack, hardtack is like a ship's molar is one of the names it goes by. It was what sailors used to take on long sea journeys because it didn't go bad. It had all kinds of names. People called it like devil's biscuit, like stuff like that. They hated it, right? They just dunked it in their tea, to try and soften it. But it was a nasty sort of hard, hard cracker. And so my thought was like, well, I'm going to take the bones of this and turn it into a cracker with like summer savory, which is a really traditional Newfoundland flavor. So that's kind of what I, what I tried to do. 
And when you were when you were making the recipes, like how many times would you have to, I'm sure it would vary, but how many times would it take to get it to the way you were like, ah, this is so good? <laughs> Some were really easy, like um, fireweed I had worked with at restaurants before so it was really easy for me to come up with some like a fireweed cocktail no sweat fireweed jelly habanero jelly or jalapeno jelly I that was like I love floral flavors and a little bit of back heat that just makes sense to me and I already sort of know the structure for this boxty boxty is a traditional Irish dish um, and so it's usually done with potatoes and so I put it with like sweet potatoes and a little bit of cilantro and pickled berries and something like that, I find really easy because it's just like shredding the potato, flattening it, adding the right amount of flour. Those recipes took no time. The recipes that I found really stressful to make were like the dandelion coffee was really stressful. I tried that a million times um, before I got it the way I wanted it. The stews, because some people like a thin stew. Some people want it so thick. And so those things were, it took a while for me to sort of yeah, I would probably tested some of the stew recipes five or six times. Yeah. That feels like a lot, when you know, because yeah. that's a lot of stew to eat. <laughs> so, yeah. Your freezer yeah. must be full. <laughs> it, it is pretty full, honestly. It's a little too full. Um, yeah, chutneys, that kind of thing took a little while. Yeah, some of these definitely took a while to figure out, and some were easier. The soups are really easy. The pumpkin soup or the beet soup, those are easy. No sweat. Well, Andy, thank you so much for taking the time to be a guest today on All About Canadian Books. I so enjoyed talking to you and learning more about you and your recipes, and, and I'm starved now. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck with it. I hope you try a few recipes. I'd love to know how they go. Yeah, definitely will. And for our viewers, I'll put links down below in the description box so that you can um, find Andy's cookbook and purchase it so uh, you can try out her recipes as well. I know I'm going to be trying out a few of them. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks everyone for watching. Bye.